When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Then I saw seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer, and he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth. And there were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Now the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to blow them. And the first angel blew his trumpet, and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood. And these were thrown upon the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood, a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the rivers became wormwood, and many people died from the water because it had been made bitter. The fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of the light might be darkened, and a third of the day might be kept from shining, and likewise a third of the night. Then I looked, and I heard an eagle crying with a loud voice as it flew directly overhead. Whoa, whoa, whoa! To those who dwell on the earth at the blast of the other trumpets that the three angels are about to blow good evening everyone and welcome to chapter 8 of the revelation of jesus christ we are picking up our story we've seen six seals open and there was a little uh interruption in the story with chapter 7 about the sealing of god's people and again I, whether this goes sequentially not sequentially um i i don't know if that matters to you and i today when this is unfolding um, at the end of all things, I suppose you could use this as a roadmap. But this is meant for us to learn how to serve God with this going before us. And we have the last seal to be opened. So many calamities have occurred from the first, um, you know, we saw the four horsemen, the martyrdom, those things. And we get to chapter 8. And it says there was a silence in heaven for half an hour. So remember, when the scroll was first taken and was sealed with the seven seals, they were, there was weeping and crying because nobody was worthy. Then Jesus, who they said, the line of the tribe of Judah, of the root of David, is here. And they turn around and there is a lamb, bloodied. In other words, he didn't show himself in glory. Jesus still showed himself as the Messiah, the one broken for our transgressions. And he was worthy to open so there's great anticipation for the will of God to be unfolded on all of creation. And there's a wait. There's a stillness. Folks, you and I have got to learn to be, to be content even in God's silence. It says they were waiting in half an hour. They weren't given a time. Many times we pray to God and we say, God's not answering me. God's not doing that. In some cases, he's answering us with no. And we just don't like that answer. But there's moments when he's silent. And he's just asking us to wait. To trust him. It says, then he saw the seven angels who were before God. And they had seven trumpets given to them. And another angel was there with a golden censer. And it was given much incense to offer the prayers of the saints before the throne. And again, this is that incredible imagery that perfuming the throne room of God is the prayers of his people. We saw this going through the book of Hebrews. We've seen this earlier in the text. That's how much God cares about our prayer. We saw that those martyred for, for their faith, God deeply cares about them. God loves us greatly. And so they're rising up these prayers before God. And the angel takes the censer. 
and he takes the prayers and he fills it with fire and he throws it to the earth. And there's, a, there's thunder and rumblings and flashes of lightning and earthquakes. What is that representing? God is saying, you have done enough to my people. I've heard enough of their suffering. It's time to make it right. God has been listening to the prayers of his people. And if most of us are being honest, most of our prayers are us pleading with our Father for something. Us asking Him for something. Us revealing the pains in our hearts and the lacks of finances and our health. And broken relationships and broken hearts and broken minds before God. And He's been listening and listening. And they're like praise before Him. They're like incense in His throne. And He takes it and He says, it's time. I will make it right. I will enact this on the earth. Now, there's a couple of components to that. Number one, we live in a fallen world. The book of Romans says that all creation itself is crying out for the day of redemption. In other words, sin has tarred even creation. Now, I'm not saying it is a sentient being like a Gaia or something like that. What I am saying is everything that is broken is still crying out to God to be made right. And that's all of nature. All of those things. And so with a great showing and an earthquake, God throws prayer with fire, saying, here's my answer. And what's the answer? It's the seven angels blowing the trumpet. So we haven't seen the seal broken yet. We're seeing God answer some prayers. Folks, if God answers our prayer, that's the power and the fury in which he does so. It is no small thing for the omnipotent, omniscient, all-powerful God, the holy, 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 of the one who spoke everything into creation to answer our prayers in the real world. It is no small thing. And so the angel blows the trumpet, right? In the first one, what is it? It's hail and fire mixed with blood. Um, that is reminiscent of the plagues of Egypt, right? We see that that is one of the first things that happens. This is the third of the earth was burned up and a third of the trees were burned and all the green grass was burned. So again, this could be literal. And I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of interpretation that can show it is literal. But for you and I today, we're not seeing literally thirds of the earth burnt up. But what we are seeing is um, that natural resources are going to be destroyed through this why there's a great joke um well maybe i think it's a great joke uh it says there's buddha there's a, there's zeus and then there's there's god and uh they, they get an argument who's the greatest god and they say well, well let's show who can you know create the, the greatest thing right and so okay so everybody goes to their places and two gods look over to yahweh and say hey uh Hey, we need some dirt to get started. We need something. And God looks at him and says, get your own dirt. Right? God is literally the only thing that starts ex nihilo. Uh, that means without anything, God creates. Um, and so, uh, he also has the right to take. So he's saying, I will remove these natural resources from you. Through fire, through flood, through just warfare. You're not going to be able to count on all the forestry you count on. Now, remember, forestry is just as valuable to them in the ancient world as it is to us today. Um, let's remove some of the political things attached to that. It's what we use to make stuff. He says, you won't be able to make anything. It'll be burnt up. It'll be gone. Then the second angel blows, and this is a mountain, or like a great mountain, burning with fire. It's thrown to the sea, and the sea becomes blood again. Just like through the plagues. And the third of the living creatures die. He's in the ships. Third of the ships were destroyed. So this is into the sea, into the oceans. He says, you have abundant food. You can fish all you want. They're not going to be fishing anymore. The fish are going to die. In the ships, there will be no ships to go out fishing anymore. You're stuck. Why? And the other thing is, the trees are gone. You're not going to be able to make more ships. You're not going to find a way out of this one. 
third angel blew his trumpet, and it says a star fell like a blazing torch. And it fell on the rivers and the spring waters, and it says it was named Wormwood. Uh, and this is it became Wormwood. Wormwood was a poison. So this isn't metaphor. This is being like, look, the rivers will be polluted, be poisoned. And many people will die from it because the waters have been poisoned. They've been contaminated. So in other words, we can't flee to the sea. We can't flee to the forest. We can't flee to those deserted places where the rivers are. There's nowhere you can run. Then it says that a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars. That they hid their light to be darkened. And a third of the day may be kept from shining, and likewise a third of the night. The idea here, obviously, like God's not tearing a third of the chunk of the sun out, or the third of the moon, is he says, you've had these days to work, to enjoy it. And I'm going to make it to where you can't enjoy that anymore. So you're like, well, we have lights today. Look, if everything is being destroyed, you think it's going to be a power grid? Absolutely not. Also, that's not where we can find comfort. That's not what will be our safe place. There's a lot of times even us as Christians are trying to find safe places to run. And it's things we've made and it's things that make us feel comfortable forest the things we make from it the ocean the things we eat from it we are used to mastering the earth god says not anymore but the reality is none of our hope is what we can master these are all false things that will come up short and it's almost to the point where we will die for the wrong thing we'll die just because we're uncomfortable where we would give our lives for comfort sometimes. And then it ends with, I looked and I heard an eagle crying overhead. Whoa, whoa, whoa to those who dwell on the earth. At the blast of the trumpet, the three angels are about to blow. He says, this sounds awful, but it doesn't even come close to what's coming next. So we've had seals opened. Now trumpets are being blown. Now again, the sun being struck, the moon, these all go back to the Old Testament. He says, look, the greatest empires on the world who think they can keep my people down have another thing coming. Why? We just saw in the last text, this is the answer to the prayers. God says, I will protect my people. And everything people use to, to tear them down, everything people are using, the trees, the ocean, right, the rivers, all of those things that they can think they can rely on to come against me and my people have another thing coming. Folks, as horrific as this is, this is God telling us, look what I did in the land of Egypt. Can I not do that for you today? Could I not go to these links to make sure that you are provided for and cared for? And he says, look, to those who dwell on the earth, you haven't seen anything yet. And we'll cover that next week. So in between uh, the, the last seal being opened and there's this silence, God takes prayers and he puts it on the earth. And when that happened, the angels blow their trumpets. And he says, I will be the defender of my people. This text is just showing I can protect even in the midst of calamity. They're mine. The enemy has no right. The enemy has no place in our lives. We don't need to fear anything. Not the end. Not governments. Not upheavals. Not inflation. Not a virus. Not our neighbor. Not the other on the other side. Not a political ideology. Nothing. There's nothing to fear in the economy of God. If we are His, and He is ours, we can trust that He will protect us. Or, that if our lives be taken, He gathers us. He will be right there waiting for us on the other side. And that's the promise. 
he will be with us no matter what in heaven or on earth and so this is really a thing is can we trust him of course and what i love about what we're seeing in this book so far is this is the ask when times are tough maybe your forest is gone your rivers have dried up maybe you're not seeing the light of day very often do you trust that god can be there for you because he promises he will so find hope find encouragement today i want to thank you for joining us you can email us at staff at newday416.church Go to the website, newday416.church, if you want any more information, want to give, or anything like that. We love you all. We want to thank you for joining us. Have a blessed and wonderful week, and we'll see you on Sunday.